Sean Haney here with realagriculture.com and we are at Farm Tech 2016 in Edmonton, Alberta at Northlands. And right now we are joined by well, I'm gonna I'm gonna describe it as a really good friend of Real Ag, mm-hmm. Kent Erickson. How are you doing? I'm I'm great. This is uh I'm always excited about being at Farm Tech every year. You get to see new people, you get to see all some old people who have been around, so it's been good. Yeah, this is this show of course is uh Everything it's cracked up to be. It's, oh, yeah. It's pretty awesome. You know, it's fantastic. You know, so I made, I tweeted something today. So Rick Talio, you made some comment. It was 17th. He's been here right from the start. And, you know, I call him the godfather of farm tech. And, you know, you come in and you hear him on the big screen and or the in the overshadow and you hear everything going on. And, I mean, he's been the pinnacle of, of this event. And yeah. you look at it now. I mean, you look at the trade show it's built to where it's at and the speakers we're getting. I mean, it's just been fantastic. Yeah. So uh, where, where's the farm? So I farm two hours southeast of here, Irma. Irma. So it's a very big town. You know, we've got a school, K-12, to and there's, I think, 500 people there. But, uh, yeah, I uh, farm there all my life. Uh, we grew up there. My dad, we have a homestead since 1908. Yeah. And um, I've got a wife and four children at home, four, seven, nine, and 11. And they're uh, itching to come and see me this week, but my wife's coming up tomorrow night. So. Oh, cool. Yep. So your, your time with, you've been on the Alberta Wheat Commission uh, since the beginning of Alberta yep, Wheat Yep, since 2012, and then I was with Winter Wheat since 2006. And your time is done. My time is done tomorrow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's uh, you know it's been fun. Um, you know, I'll never take you know the experiences and the you know from the people that I've sat on the boards with. I mean, there's been some really good people on all the commissions. Uh, you know, being part of Farm Tech and the planning committee with guys like Rick. Um, you know, those experiences that hopefully I can take back to my local community, maybe to other endeavors that are outside of agriculture and. Uh, Maybe take some time to uh, just spend at home, too. <laughs> That'd be good. We're going to talk about the future, what you're doing next. But yep. what's kind of your, what's the moment you're most proud of? Oh, man. You know, I think being a part of uh, the, the amalgamation creation of the Wheat Commission. You know, also I sit on the Cereals Canada board as well. And so being a part of organizations, even farm tech, you know, I wasn't, uh, we made the transfer over from Mayfield yeah. over to here. Um, so those are the three things, you know, and, uh, different um, perspectives on each one, but to be part of that steering committee and be part of those decisions, to be a little nervous, you know, when we went from Mayfield, we were pretty comfortable being there, um, to moving to a facility like this, not knowing if farmers are going to follow, if it's going to look good, if it's going to be a big event, if we're going to sell out. Yeah. And then looking, you know, back, I guess my biggest cause is just having the Wheat Commission and the leadership that we have there, and which has spawned out, you know, we have good leadership at all the other commissions as well. Uh, you know, I'm really proud to, to be a part of this um, industry and proud of the leadership and uh, the knowledge we have. Well, the, the industry is about to put your, uh, your experience <laughs> to really good work, a new challenge. So yep. tell us a little bit about this new coalition that you are the chair of. So, I mean, this coalition, um, you know, it really evolved, obviously, over Christmas and through December. You know, we've been working together. So you have the Crop Sector Working Group. You have the Intensive Livestock Working Group. And with Bill Six, I don't know if you've heard about Bill Six or not, uh, Sean. But uh, I was going to look up a Wikipedia page later. (laughs) But, yeah, so Bill Six, you know, is something that's near and dear to all farmers and all agriculture and we felt we needed to get together as livestock and grain farmers you know when we started have seeing these protests in december my dad he went to one in edmonton and he said this is the first time he was ever part of a protest where both grain and livestock were on the same page right because usually those two groups can be they have different interests yeah we have different you know we, we want feed price to be really high they want feed price to be really low so you know right there we have different interests at the same time when we're looking at at safety on our farms it's a, it's the number one important part, you know, on our farms. And so we tried to find how can we get together and come up with a unified message for government, you know, kind of a, a one-stop shop, you know, is kind of what we were looking at. And at the end of the meeting we had on Friday and, you know, I was acting chair, co-chair along with Paige Stewart, who's oh, yeah, with right. the, the yeah. cattle feeders. And, um, moving forward, it was just amazing to see that we came to some sort of consensus about, we need to do this together. Um, I don't have a lot of details of what's going on after. You know, I think we had a good meeting with the minister last night um, when he came and spoke at uh, at Farm Tech here. But um, just how can we move forward in a unified voice to get the right messages to government at the right time? Well, it does seem, it it seems like something would just happen naturally, but it it doesn't really happen where we have had a history where, you know, getting the canola producers, the beef producers, the cattle feeders, the weak, to get them in one room, 
a lot of them probably wouldn't even know each other. Yeah. Had never met before. Yeah, exactly. You know, and the way our industry kind of specializes as well, you do have a lot of, um, you know, cow-calf guys that are just cow-calf. You have a lot of grain guys that don't know what's going on with cow-calf or, right. or beef or, you know, or, or pork. And so to get them all together and to realize a lot of the emotion, a lot of the concerns we have are across all different livestock and all different grain issues, right? And so I think it's important. We're going to have to figure out how we manage our silos, you know, we like to work in silos sometimes. So Bill Six has obviously unified the group. Yeah. The challenge now is how do you, how do you keep the, the glue together? And that's going to be trying to figure out how we manage the relationship with government. You know, we all have really good working relationships with the government of the day, whether it was the previous government or now. We have good open lines of communication. We all have different ways of interacting with the government. But what's important with this one is how can we have all those groups come together and decide on a unified approach, kind of a one-stop, so we're all saying the same thing and we all have maybe even one or two people working on everybody's behalf. And that's going to be a, a different environment for some of us. Well, and also for government, right? Because let's be honest, uh, and I'm not speaking about just specifically about the Alberta government, it, it is a tactic of governments around the world. Yep. Divide and conquer yep. can be a bit of a tactic, right? Yep. So th this is obviously something to combat the possibility of that. Yeah, and one of the things we did at, at this session was we kind of did a, a, a pseudo um, roundtable discussion, just like the government's talking about these six tables. And what we approached the government um, last night about is it really didn't work very well. You know, when you fragment these into these silos, the problem is labor standards fall in line with employment standards. And when you talk about employment standards on the farm, those directly relate to farm safety. And so all these things interact. So when you start having these divided tables, all of a sudden you lose the message. And I think that's what we're trying to do is we're trying to portray to government that if we can come up with a solution revolving around the whole legislation and the whole regulation, we'd like to give them a package of what works best for everybody rather than them try to split and divide and conquer, which, I mean, it's a tactic that they're trying to manage their, uh, you know, each individual legislation, but at the end of the day, it doesn't work very well. Well, and sometimes it can just happen naturally where it's like, well, wait a minute, wheat people. We <laughs> talked to the sugar beet growers and they told us something different. Yeah. It prevents that. Yeah. And it's, you know, and that's what they're trying, you know, that's what they would like to do. And I mean, all governments do that, oh, yeah, not, exactly. not just this one. And I think that's where... If we can, the governance and this cohesive message is if we can get everything all under one tent, and that's where this coalition will be so strong, if we can get this under one tent, consensus-based, and come up with a solution that I actually think could possibly be a win-win for government, for producers, and for everybody involved. Well, you just think of how much government staff travels all over the place meeting with all these different groups, and if they you know, have to talk to two or three people instead of 12, it yep. makes a big difference. Exactly. So is this a Bill 6 coalition, or is this a coalition that possibly could live further into the future? Um, I think my, my answer to that right now is Bill 6. Um, it can fall in line. It, to me, it's actually more about farm safety. You know, I think it's not Bill 6. It's about how we can make safer farms and move that fall forward. I mean, that's what we've been talking about for a number of years now is how can we bring some measures in so we can be accountable to what's farm safety look like on our farm at the same time being reasonable and being flexible you know, a cow is calving or, you know, the rain is coming. We have to have flexibility in the fact that we're growing living organisms. Living organisms don't go to sleep at five o'clock, right? And so that's what we have to manage, that flexibility and respecting that we have employees and employers that have to be managed as well. Yeah. Kent, you got to get to your session. Yeah. You got to speak at a concurrent here. So. I do. <laughs> <laughs> On crop rotation. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exciting. So, hey, thanks a lot for joining us and uh, good luck with the coalition and we'll definitely talk to you again soon. Thanks a lot. I appreciate being on. Cheers. Good.